In the world of traditional master data management solutions, the phrase, we need to make a few changes to the MDM to meet some new business requirements, is usually met with a serious bout of apprehension from the IT team because they know it's going to be a six-month effort at least to change an existing legacy MDM environment. Not with Reltio. In this video, you'll see how our powerful platform makes it dead simple for you to keep up with an ever-changing set of business needs. The scenario we'll work through is one where I'm the MDM specialist at Acme Inc., a B2B software company. We used a horizontally focused velocity pack from Reltio for our first phase and we went live in under 90 days. We are currently reaping the benefits of improved analytics in our cloud data warehouse as a result. Based on this success, I've now been approached to see if our MDM platform can also support a new set of downstream business initiatives. We'll use the business value framework supplied by Reltio as the means to very easily understand and communicate the value of our MDM program to the business. Here you can see how the first phase of our MDM program was focused on supporting targeted marketing and customer centricity. Now that our MDM foundation is in place, we need to expand to support some new use cases. Firstly, we want to improve sales effectiveness by being able to see exactly what products and services are being consumed by our customers globally in order to determine white space and identify upsell opportunities in our CRM for our sales teams. Secondly, we want to improve the efficiency and automation of our service, success and support teams by offering them the full picture of the relationships we have with any customer at their fingertips so they can serve our customers more efficiently with fewer handoffs and errors. In order to meet these objectives, we need to add product as a new entity type into our MDM and we need to connect our customers with the products they've purchased and or consumed. Our particular velocity pack, unlike others provided by Reltio for different industries, does not include product as a predefined entity type, so we'll simply extend our current environment with very little effort. This will in turn set the stage to support numerous other business initiatives after this that also involve other domains. What you will see over the course of the next 10 minutes is us adding a whole new domain complete with attributes, match rules, validation rules, survivorship rules, a relationship to connect to customers, UI updates, and so on. Let's get this done. I'm now in the Reltio UI, which is my main window into the data contained within this tenant across my entities. Notice all you see here in terms of current entity types is location, contact, and organization. Because I have the appropriate authority, I can switch to the Reltio console, which is my gateway to configure and manage my Reltio tenant. Specifically, I'll step into the data modeler console for most of my work. Not surprisingly, we see our current entity types here, namely contact, location, and organization. Per my requirements, I now need to add product as a new entity type. So all I need to do is click create new to bring up the add entity type screen. Call it product and save it. In all of five seconds, I now have a new entity type available in my data model, albeit without any attributes right now. We've been told that there are some common attributes that apply to all products, so let's start with those right away. First we have the product name, which we'll add as a string. Note all the typical data types available here. Then we have product description, which is also a string. There are numerous options that I can enable for attributes that change how they behave in the Reltio UI, but for now I'll ignore all of those switches. Once we get a more comprehensive set of attributes, we'll modify this entity accordingly. We could also potentially place some of these new attributes under the control of the Reltio Reference Data Management solution, but for now, let's just have free text attributes until we learn more about the nuances of our product data. We've also been told that while there is a primary key of a product record in each system, there are numerous identifiers for a product by which it can be referenced by different stakeholders in the organization. To manage this requirement, we'll use a nested attribute here, which essentially means an attribute that can in turn have attributes. This is similar to a child table if you're familiar with relational database concepts, except in the world of Reltio, this is just an attribute with attributes. Pretty simple. The other interesting concept with regards to attributes in Reltio is that any attribute can store one value or many values based simply on how we configure our survivorship rules, which we'll look at in a bit. Our two nested attribute values will be identifier type and identifier ID. 
We could have as many attributes as we wanted in this nested attribute structure, and also within the entity type in general. We now have our new product entity defined with some attributes, at least according to what we know so far. The flexibility of the Reltio platform means I don't need to have all the answers up front. I can proceed with what I know now and make adjustments when new information becomes available. Note, no physical changes have been made to the underlying database or APIs because the entire data model you see here is just a metadata layer on top of the Reltio platform. The simplicity of this Reltio data model is such that a conceptual model drawn on a whiteboard usually translates exactly to what you would end up with in Reltio. Next, we need to add a new relationship between the newly defined product entity and our customers. Reltio leverages a graph technology behind the scenes to significantly simplify the concept of connecting entities together. Let's step into the Relationship tab to create a new relationship. We'll call this relationship Used By. The start entity type will be Product. The end entity type will be Organization. And just like that, we have a new relationship. Pretty simple. Let's now add our three attributes we've been told about. Subscription Start Date subscription renewal date, and subscription end date. Once this is complete, I'm actually ready to load data directly into both my product entity and into my relationship to connect products and customers together if I wanted to. However, I have some additional work left to fine tune this new entity type based on my requirements. We've been told that there is duplication in the product data, but that the duplication does not span across regions. In other words, we can sell the same product in multiple regions, but that means it's actually different products. Let's go and create some rules to now identify duplicates. I will now step into the Match Rule Editor to create my rules. I'm going to start with the rule that performs exact matching on name, type, region, and the identifiers. Basically, everything has to be exactly the same for this rule to catch it. This is a very conservative rule which is great as a starting point, and is also a good candidate to automate once we get feedback from our user base. For now, we'll simply set it to display possible matches to a user. Then I'll add another rule that allows some variation in names that seem similar based on things like misspelled words, character transposition, and so on. We'll also include exact match on type and exact match on region to ensure we're meeting the need of keeping the same product names across regions as separate products. Then I'll add a third rule that'll identify matches just based on records having the same product identifiers. This could possibly highlight cases for us if there are products across regions with the same IDs, which apparently shouldn't happen, but one never knows. Three quick rules to start with is good for now. We can adjust and add more once we get feedback from our users. If I had product data already loaded, I could have elected to train Reltio's machine learning model to recognize the duplicates, but I don't have the data loaded yet, hence my rules-based approach to start with. I've also been told that the data quality of the products is poor, so we need to create a few data validation rules to identify records of lower quality. Apparently, product names must not be shorter than five characters, but this is not well enforced, so we need to be able to check for that. For the name length data validation, I'll use a regular expression on name to check for length. There are numerous options available to me when creating these rules. Also, each product is supposed to have a description, a type, and a region, but apparently that too is not well enforced, so we'll check for those conditions too. The data validation rules in Reltio are used in real time to inspect the incoming data, and if an issue is detected, then the validation warning is actually injected into the incoming record as additional metadata, making it very easy for users and or systems to find records with certain data quality problems. These rules are pretty simple for now, but once users get to see what's possible, we can always add more. Next stop is we need to configure some survivorship rules on our newly defined product entity. Recall earlier, I mentioned this is how you control what is actually displayed or rendered in real time when a user or a system accesses the data from Reltio, whether it be via the Reltio UI or via the APIs directly. This is also another area of great flexibility in Reltio. Because Reltio renders the data in real time based on a request, we can actually create different sets of survivorship rules based on the needs of different consumers. For now, I'll just create one rule set 
And once I've gathered some feedback from the different stakeholders, I can create more if needed, or I can adjust my existing one. For each attribute, I can select one or more rules that control how to choose the most appropriate contributing value from the various source records. For the name, I'll use a rule called frequency, meaning we will always render the most frequently occurring value of the name across the sources. For the description, the type, and the region, I'll use recency, which means always use the most recent contribution no matter which source is sending the data. Quite a simple set of rules to start with, but easy to adjust based on feedback, especially given that the data is simply rendered based on these rules. For the identifiers, I'll use a rule called aggregation, so we can ensure we get all the distinct values rendered for us. Recall earlier, we spoke about the need to have multiple identifiers for each product, with a type and an ID. Well, this is where our survivorship rules will ensure that we see all the distinct values without us having to concern ourselves with creating a child table. Our last step is to update the Relteo UI to show the new relationship we just added between product and organization. This will ensure that anyone using the Relteo UI to manage or look at any particular products or customers will see the relationships between the customer and the product. I need to make this change in the UI modeler, which is one of the apps in the Relteo console. This app primarily controls how you would like the attributes and the relationships to be laid out on the screen for each entity type. Note here you see all the entity types, including the new product entity we added earlier. There are many options here, but for my purposes, I will add a new relationship facet, I'll choose organization as my related entity, and now I'll choose the used by relationship. Switching to the organization entity, I can add a relationship facet there to the product entity. Once I'm done, I can actually publish this change and it'll now be available within the Relteo UI. Let's recap what we achieved in the last 10 minutes because we cranked out a lot of good work in a very short space of time. Firstly, we added the new product entity. Then we added a set of attributes, including a nested attribute to take into account product identifiers. We added a relationship to connect products to organizations. We added attributes on the relationship. We added various match rules to identify duplicates, including exact and fuzzy matching. We added a series of data validation rules to identify possible data quality problems as data is ingested. We then added a set of survivorship rules to control how we want to render the data in real time based on source system contributions. And lastly, we modified the Relteo UI layout for both product and organization entities to allow end users to see and manage the relationship between products and customers. All that took us only 10 minutes. To finish up, let's switch back to the Relteo UI and give all this a quick test. Back in my Relteo UI, I can now see the new entity type. Note, it has zero records in it because I'm yet to load some data. Let's give it a quick test to see if everything is working as expected. I can now click on the plus icon on the left side of the screen to create a new entity directly from within the Relteo UI. I'll choose product as my entity type. The screen that you see here is just a dynamic rendering of the available attributes in this entity type, allowing me to quickly add some data. I will add a name, a type, a region, and an identifier for this record, and then click on save to send this request to the Relteo API. Note, I'm leaving off description on purpose to see if our data validation rule catches this problem. If I wanted to, I could have configured this validation rule to throw an error if a description is missing, but we elected to only inject a warning into the record. Here I can see my validation rule warning about the missing description is working well. Next, let's create another record to see if our match rules are working okay too. I will call this my other product and specify a description, a type, and a region before saving it. Here I can see that our match rules have detected a possible duplicate based on the same product identifier, so that's working nicely too. Lastly, let's see if we can connect this new product to a customer record. I can edit this record, choose any customer record for the purposes of our test, and save it. Here I can now see the relationship to the customer. Now let me step through to the other side of this relationship and view this from the customer record's perspective. I'll declare victory here and now use the low-code, no-code capabilities of Relteo to rapidly load my product data from the data lake to prepare for a show-and-tell with the business users. What you just saw in action was the flexibility of numerous core components of the Relteo platform. 
allowing me as an authorized end user to rapidly modify my Realtio tenant to meet a whole new set of needs. Like what you saw in this video? Keep watching this series to see more demos of our product in action or contact us for a complimentary consultation with our team. Thanks for watching.